Right, we are live. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, we are carrying on with our solo playthrough series of The Dragon's Demand. Uh, if you can hear me and see me okay, as always, please let me know in the chat if everything is working. I think everything's working. Ben's here. Hi, Ben. Thank you for joining in. I don't know about this being a more advanced scenario. I mean, you're seeing solo today. This game plays very, very differently solo than it does multiplayer. Um, and yeah, we, we're just gonna we're just gonna jump in. Um, a couple of important things before we start. Using a different dice tray because the other dice tray is somewhere else. Not sure where it is. Uh, and as always, um, this is not a sponsored video. This is, these videos are only made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And if you like the content that I create, it is the start of a new month. Um, yeah, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is there, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Uh, and you can help support the channel and keep me making videos like this. Right, so we're going to jump in. Part 7 of The Dragon's Demand. If you haven't seen any of the previous ones, then storyline-wise, this isn't going to make any sense. But each game, each stream I do is a self-contained scenario. Um, so yeah, right. We are on Part 3, or Adventure 3, A Tepperact Redux. So, ah, I've just realised I don't think I've upgraded the vault. Okay. Right, no, I haven't upgraded the vault. Okay, so talk amongst yourselves. I've all set up and ready, and I've just realised I haven't actually upgraded the vault. So, for those who haven't seen it, <laughs> um, when you get to Adventure 3, you are supposed to upgrade the vault by taking the level 3 cards and adding them in to the vault. And I forgot to do that, and I've already created my things. So, you're going to see this. Ugh. Here we go. Here is the vault. And what I need to do is I need to take... Uh, the level three monsters from the future monster side. Okay, otherwise, yeah, I wouldn't be finding any level three stuff. Okay, so we're going to be another 10 minutes today, unfortunately. If you need to go and grab a coffee or something, then feel free. Or if you want to see how you set the game up, uh, then, then this is how it is. So what you do is you take the level three monsters, because we are now at adventure level three, and you shuffle them in to the existing vault. So this is the existing vault. Uh, which is currently filled with level 0, 1, and 2 monsters, and I am now putting in the level 3 ones. Now, if you're playing the Curse of the Crimson Throne, I think when you get to level 3, you're supposed to take out the level 0s. Um, do the characters play pretty differently? They definitely do. The, um, and if you've not seen any of the previous... Uh, oh, Oliver's had a lovely ice cream. Oliver, can you get me an ice cream? Um, if you've not seen any of the previous playthroughs, then I am playing Mauricial. Mauricial is a very interesting character. She's a rogue, um, and she plays in such a way that these scenarios that I've been playing in this series would be very different if I wasn't playing them. For example, Mauricial has an ability that if she is on her own at a location, which she always is because I'm playing solo, um, she can evade any card. Literally, any card that I find... I can evade. Okay, now that is a, a, an ability which is unique to Mauricial. Um, and it means that everything plays very differently. If Mauricial was with a party of three or four, it would be, would be different again. Right, okay, let's get this sorted. So here's all the monsters. This is the monsters now, including the level threes. Where are my three locations? There are my three locations. So my deck is all right. That's not changed. And we need to put, so we've given these a good shuffle. We need to put two monsters in the ruin, one monster in the library, and two monsters in the shrine. So I do all of this um, off camera. So yeah, although I'm starting this at four o'clock in the afternoon, and this is this is where the Patreon support comes in handy, um, I've basically taken, obviously I've stopped work for the day, so I'm losing money by doing this, uh, but that's fine, because that's what the Patreon support is for. But also, I normally take about an hour out of my day to set this up beforehand. So I'm actually spending quite a bit of time preparing this, which you don't see. Except you are seeing it now because I've forgotten to shuffle the level 3 cards in. Right. People are talking about ice cream in the chat. There should be a rule against that. No, I don't mind you, bring, I don't mind you talking about ice cream as long as I can have one. There's the rules. Okay, so level 3 barriers. Um, have, they, have they invented um, electronic ice cream? They have. It's called taking a photo of it and sending it to me and making me even more jealous. Okay, so we have level three barriers as well, shuffled in. 
and we need three barriers in the ruin, uh, two barriers in the library, and three barriers in the shrine. So we are going to be coming across a lot of barriers today. Let's hopefully, I've not left my thieves tools in the bottom of my backpack. Right, weapons. There's no point in me adding the level three weapons in because I'm only ever going to find my old rapier, um, which is a running joke. In fact, did I forget to... Yes, I forgot to put these barriers in. Never mind. Put them in there. Yeah, let's put the old cards back, Paul, first. Blessings. Creating the Blessings deck takes ages. Right, barriers, spells. There's lots of spells in the library. Uh, we have a weapon. Where's the weapons? Weapons are there. We have another spell. We have some items. Oh, all of this hard work that I did this afternoon. All undone. There you go. Right, we're sorted. So, weapons. Again, have I did in the level three weapons? I have added in the level three weapons. Okay, right. Tyler's here. Hi, Tyler. Yeah, what are these Jaffa Cake things you keep hearing about? Yeah, definitely need to get on the Jaffa Cake thing. <laughs> right, so Oliver's offering ice creams for everybody. Excellent. Uh, if you don't know, by the way, if you are watching this video and you don't follow Oliver on um, social media, Check out the Tabletop Games blog. Oliver does um, a whole series of written articles which are all very uh, interesting and quite thought-provoking on games. Uh, he does videos as well, but yeah, it's the written articles that I, I really like. So yeah, go and check out the Tabletop Games blog. Uh, Oliver, if you want to put a link in the chat to your web website, assuming that YouTube will allow you to post a link. Uh, if it doesn't, I can approve it. Let's put that on the other screen there. There you go. Yeah, try and put the link in there so that other people can find it, but also to see if YouTube will allow you to post a link. Right, one weapon there. Oh, that was it. Right, so after all that, there's one weapon in the ruin. <laughs> okay, next up is spells. So now I'm not a spell using character, so I don't generally... Oh no, I need some more sleeves. Right, unfortunately, I haven't sleeved. Really sorry for this, but I am going to have to... What am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to unsleeve these because I haven't got enough blue sleeves. It sort of worked. Did it work? No, the link didn't seem to have worked. It's tabletopgamesblog.com. Okay, there you go. So yeah, not only have I not set up, I haven't de-sleeved um, my other game where I've got some blue sleeves. Unfortunately, Fantasy Flight games don't make blue sleeves anymore. So I'm having to uh, unsleeve other games that used that, that, that I was using my blue sleeves with um, in order to get enough sleeves for this. And because I'm not removing cards uh, from the vault, I'm only adding cards in. We are, we are going to be here a while. So, yeah, apologies for this, but you get in to see me do all of the all of the setup that you would have to do at this point. Now, as I say, I'm not a spell-using character, so we, we can chat while we're, while we're here. So the spells in this game uh, work in a very clever way in that if you are not a spell-using character, you can still use a spell. And I think thematically what that represents, correct me if I'm wrong, Tyler, is that it's a scroll. Because even if you are not proficient in spells, you can still use the spell, but then after you've used it, it's gone. Now, some of the spells are not very good because they rely on your arcane skills and stuff like that, which if you're not a spell using character, you won't actually have many of. Um, but yeah, I quite like the fact that the spells can be used in that way. Yeah, remember to breathe, slow down. Oh, that. I've got Jaws of the Lion tonight. Jaws of the Lion tonight and finishing Flash Series 3. We're on the last episode. We were watching it yesterday and I fell asleep. So, yeah, we're on the last episode of Flash Series 3. Right. Weapons. No. Spells. Right. Okay. So, spells. One there. Three there. And one there. There you go. That's the spells done. Right. What's next? 
armors. So here are the existing armors. Uh, and here are the future armors. And we need to take out the level three armors. And I need to desleeve some more cards. I'm just going to desleeve all of these level five monsters because I am nowhere going to get there. <laughs> In fact, the level five, the level four, five, and six monsters are only when you're playing Curse of the Crimson Throne because the Dragon's Demand only goes up to three. Uh, you've been playing a lot of Imperium this week. Yes. Yeah, it is good. Which Jaws of the Lion scenario are we on? I can't remember, actually. No. Um, the last two scenarios we've done have been side scenarios. So without giving too many spoilers away, um, there is four characters included in Jaws of the Lion. And there is a scenario specific for each of the characters' uh, stories. And we did the one for Vicky's character, and then we've done the one for my character. I'm the demolitionist. So they have been done. So we took a break from the storyline to, um, to do those character-specific ones. So I don't quite know which one we're going to do tonight. Probably pick up the, the main storyline again. I mean, I didn't need to do this. I could have just picked a few and be done with it, but... 36 degrees. Yeah, you're definitely going to need an ice cream. It's been... We're in the middle of a heat wave today in the UK. This is day four of a heat wave. Uh, I think yesterday was the warmest day of the year so far. Um, uh, it's due to go bad tomorrow. It's, it's due to turn into storms and everything tomorrow. So, right, what are these? These are armor. Do we have any armor? We have one there. And that's it. All of that for one card that I might never come across. Right, next up is items. So, future items. Oh, I've got these in sleeves. Or I've got some of these in sleeves. I actually started sleeving them and then ran out of sleeves. So, we've got a few of these. You know me, I can't do half a job. I've got to do it right. So I am going to do this all the way while we're having a chat about other games. Ben's in Birmingham, 24 degrees. Yeah, I think it's about that here. Okay, that sleeve's broken, unfortunately. So yeah, this is the thing. With Fantasy Flight Games not making sleeves anymore, I can't get any more of these sleeves Unless I find some, like, ones in a shop or something like that. And if I don't have enough, then I'm going to have to basically re-sleeve all of these cards to, <laughs> to something else. So, oh, and it's only 25 in Kampala. Okay, so, oh, okay, so James has heard it's meant, meant to get hotter tomorrow. Okay, well, Vicky's off to uh, visit her parents tomorrow, so we'll see if it gets hotter. Right, these are items. So, one for there. Two for there, and none for there. Right, that's the item done. We are, we are getting there. Slowly but surely, we are getting there. Next, allies. Future allies. What have we got now? We have one, two, three, four. Oh, gosh, we've got loads. I don't know if I'm going to have enough sleeves. Don't think I am. Get those monsters out of the way. Because I've not even done the blessings yet. And yes, the character-specific scenarios in Jaws of the Lion are really fun and unique. So yeah, this is, um, you were there for the Q&A yesterday, weren't you? But I think somebody said, somebody asked me in the Q&A, what's my favourite part of Jaws of the Lion? Um, and the answer was the scenarios. The scenario design in Jaws of the Lion, I personally feel is better than Gloomhaven. Not to say the ones in Gloomhaven are not good, because some of them are good, but the scenario design in Jaws of the Lion are really good. So all of these cards, by the way, that I'm sleeving, I've never used these cards because I've never got this far in this game before. Right, three ice creams coming up. Excellent. I do have some ice cream in the freezer. It's Oreo ice cream. Really, really nice. Linda's here. Hi, Linda. Uh, your rain days are over. Weekend brought temperatures down for the beginning of the day and rising slower to the end of the day. Well, it's good that somebody's got rain, because we had, we had like two weeks of rain, like non-stop. Uh, and now this, it's just, it's England. 
it's probably a combination of England and global warming together gets us this extreme weather. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying the series. Yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the series as well. Um, and it, it, it's really weird because sometimes when I'm desperate to play a game, once I've played it, I'm done with it and, that, and, that, and that's it. Uh, and I'm and I'm happy that I've played it, and I tick it off the off the list. Uh, and I'm you know I'll play I'll I'll play it again if I need to. But we are six episodes into what this is a nine episode series, and already by the time I was three or four episodes in, I was like I want to play this again solo with a different character because I'm enjoying it that much. Right, allies, no allies, no allies, no allies. Okay, so I did all of that literally for nothing. I should have checked first. Okay. Finally, blessings. Now, the problem with this is this side of the box is now so full it doesn't actually fit all of the cards in. So I'm having to move some things out. Right, blessings. Do we have any level three blessings? We do. We have a few level three blessings. Oh, actually, we've got loads. Right, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Because I... Um, yeah, I'm going to have to de-sleeve these. Right, let's de-sleeve these. So what, yeah, what am I going to do about these blue sleeves? I think I was using these blue sleeves in Marvel Champions, which I'm not playing really at the moment at all. So I probably need to go through my Marvel Champions tonight while sat in front of the TV and de-sleeve the rest of them because I think I bought enough. I, I would be an idiot if I didn't buy enough to sleeve all of this game. Uh, um, yeah. Either that, or I can check in with Games Law to see if they've got any of these left back in the in the warehouse or something. Otherwise, yeah, I'm going to have to de-sleeve them because I don't have enough. Right, okay, off we go. Blessings, and this is the last ones that we're doing. And then we'll be ready to start. So yeah, thank you for bearing with me. 20 minutes it's taken to do all of this setup. Wow. But yeah, as I say, it, it, this is my fault and I apologise for it. Um, I, I, I thought I'd done the setup and I completely forgot to upgrade the vault. Um, you are getting to see what upgrading the vault entails. Of course, if you're not sleeving your cards, you don't need to... This, this would be a lot quicker. Um, but because the cards get shuffled a lot in this game, uh, I like sleeving them. And you're getting to see the part of the setup that I normally do off camera, which which I did do off camera, but obviously I'm having to do it again. Are these sleeves better than Ultra Pro? So, when I started playing Magic the Gathering many, many, many years ago, Ultra Pro was pretty much the sleeve to get. There wasn't many sleeves available at that time, so I bought Ultra Pro. But personally, I hate the hologram. I really, really dislike the hologram on the Ultra Pro sleeves. So... I know the newer Ultra Pro sleeves, um, the hologram is transparent, which is good because that hologram used to block out parts of the card. You know, depending on which card game you were playing, that hologram was, was painful. So I don't like the hologram. Um, but quality wise, uh, the sleeves were, were, were good. But I decided to go with Fantasy Flight Games because they are good quality sleeves, but also the size consistency, and I spoke about this in the live Q&A yesterday, is that I was finding with certain brands of sleeves, you were getting um, fairly big inconsistencies. I'm going to have to shuffle the hourglass in as well. Fairly big inconsistencies within the size of the sleeves, even within the same pack. Um, and that, that was annoying because, you know, like a lot of people in this hobby, I have certain OCD tendencies. And... I want to buy something, and when I buy a deck of sleeves, I want them to be all literally exactly the same size, to the to the to the tenth of a millimeter. And I was, and, and some manufacturers, you bought a pack, and you could see the size differences within the same pack of sleeves. So they weren't good. Um, and I figured Fantasy Flight Games, they're a trusted brand, they were good quality, they were the ones that I chose. Then Fantasy Flight Games stopped doing sleeves. Game Genic did sleeves. Uh, I haven't got any Game Genic sleeves but I've been told that they are not the same size. So that's a real shame. That is a real shame. Okay, so yes, watching Paul shuffling. I mean, look at this, this is the blessings. There's so many here. 
right? <laughs> There's a lot of blessings. So I'm going to count out none for there, one for there, three for there. There you go. And we need 30 for the hourglass. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. We are almost there. One, two, three, four, five. Almost there. It's always 30, uh, 30 cards in the hourglass. No matter how many players you have playing the game, which is, and I've spoken about this before, it's, it's weird how it scales, but it does. Solo, you have 30 turns to do it in. Six player game, you have five turns to do it in. It, it's just, it's weird how it works. Right, there is the hourglass. I think we are all done. And these are the three henchmen that we're going to be facing today. So in this particular scenario, let's go back to it. We have no villain. We have a danger, which is the mummy. So this is the danger. We will encounter this at certain times. But we have closing henchmen. And because I'm playing solo, I've only got three locations, the library, the ruin, and the shrine. And we have the Green Faith Druid, the Chemist, and the Lunar Naga. So these are the three henchmen. Uh, now, the Chemist is actually a level zero card. Go away. Right? So this is quite easy, this one. Uh, the Green Faith Druid is a level one card, and the Lunar Naga is a level three card. So this is going to be really tough um, when, we, when we meet that. And these are going to get shuffled. Let's just check that I've got these right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. Okay, so we're playing on the medium size for each one, which is the default uh, difficulty level of the game. Okay, so that goes in there, that goes in there, that goes in there, and then these locations get shuffled. Okay, so Arcane Tin Men, for the same reason, but they got bought by Dragon Shield. Okay, yeah, I'd heard Arcane Tin Men were good. I've heard Dragon Shield are good. Um, yeah, I mean, people in the live Q&A yesterday were throwing in uh, names of sleeve manufacturers that were good. Right, don't mess these up, Paul. So that's going there. This is the ruin. Yeah, I did all of this at three o'clock. <laughs> That's there, and then the shrine is here. Okay, we are ready to go. So welcome to part seven of the Pathfinder Adventure card game series. Um, we have the Blessing deck, we have meat. Now, the other thing that's happened since we last spoke is uh, I now have a roll. So at the end of Adventure 2, each character gets a roll card, okay? Um, so that's what happened. Now a roll card, each character comes with a roll card which is two-sided and you choose which roll you want and what it does is it replaces the powers section. It gives you more powers. Now after a little bit of help from the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Discord channel, I've gone with uh, Waylayer. So what happens is that goes over there and that basically improves my character. Now it hasn't done at the moment because the two skills that I had earlier, they transfer over. But now, uh, have I got anything new? So the top one, yeah, I do, no, I don't have the top one new, that, that's the same. When you encounter a card, if you are the only local character, you may evade it. So that's the same as before. When you would recharge or discard a knife weapon for its power, you may reload it instead. That's the same. And now on your combat check or a local check to acquire, you may discard a, you may recharge a card to add 1d6. That's similar from before. Uh, the other ones I've not got yet, but that's going to go there and I can unlock these with future, uh, future hero points. Right, we've got my deck. Um, I have chosen to keep the armor. Now this might be the wrong thing. Tyler can advise me if I've got, if I've got this wrong, but as part of the last adventure, I got a loot armor of the void glass armor. Now this is heavy armor. My character is not suited to wearing this, but I compared this to the armor that I had, and I think it's better. I can't use the bottom ability because I'm not proficient, but I think overall it is still better. Okay, zoom out, and off we go. There is my deck. Here we are. 
let's read the scenario. Yeah, 30 minutes late. Not too bad. Disadvantage of this game, setup time. Obviously, you won't be upgrading your vault every game, but setup time is still a bit of a pain. Right. Scenario 3A, the Monastery of St. Kyrixus. At last you stand at the threshold of the true threat that imperils Belheim. Whatever, it is, whatever is manipulating events has taken up residence near the ruined monastery of St. Kyrixus. This monastery is dedicated to Irori. Irori? Irori? The god of enlightenment and perfection. Irori would not like the sanctuary for evil that his shrine has become. You still don't know who or what is claiming to be a Teparax. The Griots you captured swore he was indeed the lamentable dragon of yore. They also told you of some of this being's they also told they also told you of some of this being's lieutenants. Each has a unique reason for being here, and could be diverted from helping their boss before your final showdown. First is the druid Asmor Kel. The, the Belhamite priest would not be allied with evil by choice. His wife Rima has gone missing, likely in the clutches of whatever villain is behind all this. Free her, and you might deprive that villain of Asmor Kel's aid. The alchemist Pentosh of Manaket might be harder to dislodge. She is paid well in alchemical, ma uh, alchemical and magic items for her service. To get her to defect, you'd have to somehow convince her that her fears should win out over her greed. Then there's the Lunar Naga Thena. From the reports, the Serpentine Astrologer has gone slightly mad from longing for a Teparax, believing the villain to be the powerful dragon from Law. If she can be convinced that her assistance is not wanted here, she may slither away. If these lieutenants weren't enough, there's the ever-present danger of the Griots. There is no persuading these savage bat creatures to leave. The only way to end this threat is to find the Irorian abbot that, the gar that guards the dark window through which the Griots came. If you shatter the dark window, all the Griots will be banished back to their home planet. That's good for everyone. Pierce the monastery, confront a Teparax's lieutenant, and put yourself in the best position possible. These tasks you must accomplish, for if something convinced these beings it is as powerful as a Teparax, you would very much like to face it when it has as few allies as possible. Right, Paul's here, 25 minutes late, so that's good. Uh, Edward's here. Uh, and yes, let, yeah, let's hope we're going to see a few level three cards <laughs> because otherwise all of that 20 minutes of setting up was, was of no good. Right, we have. So it mentioned that there's going to be some Griots. There's not because we only have three locations because we're so low and there are three closing henchmen. If you were playing with more locations, then the Griots would be closing henchmen at the other locations. We need to display also during setup the planar rift. Okay, so there is a planar rift. I'm going to put it here. Um, and we put a number of counters on it equal to the locations. So we have three locations. I'm just going to put a gaming rules dice on it. So there we go. That is three because I can't find the counters. Um, yeah, mark it once for each location. So that's there. Now I think we need to be removing these counters. Oh yeah, no level three cards, just the rapier. <laughs> uh, Oliver's got to pop to the post office, presumably to send me the ice cream. Thank you very much. Right, during this scenario, when you encounter the danger, which is the mummy, if you have the monk trait, or if you reveal an Irori card, you may evade it. Okay, when you defeat the Green Faith Druid, Chemist, or Lunar Naga, put it into a henchman pile instead of banishing it. And at the end of your turn, if the hours level is three, or if you close the location on your turn, you may encounter the planar rift. When you defeat the planar rift, remove a marker from it, plus an additional marker if a local character banishes an arcane or divine card. Right. To win the scenario, you need to remove all the markers from the planar rift. Right. Now, I don't really have any arcane or divine cards, so that's going to be probably defeating the planar rift three times. At the end of the scenario, note the number of henchmen in the henchman pile for the setup of scenario 3B, because basically every henchman that we manage to defeat um, means that a Teparax is going to have one fewer henchman. I decided on the Mauricial role, Edward, so hopefully that's the right one. I mean, it was it was a toss-up between the two. I wasn't quite sure, but I went with Waylayer. Oh, yeah, sorry, Mauricial's my character. I went with Waylayer. Right, we are ready to start, and I am going to choose my starting um, 
favoured card to be a knife weapon. So let's see what we get. Now, is the zoom in the right place? The zoom is not in the right place. I need to move that up a bit. There you go, because I'll put my cards here. In fact, we can move this up a little bit. Yeah. Right, okay. So, yeah, knife weapon is my favourite card. Let's have those two because I dropped them. Three, four, five. No knife weapon. Yeah, no knife weapon. So... I basically need to put them to one side. Draw five more. No knife weapon. Put them to one side. Draw five more. There's a knife. There's another knife. Right, okay. So they are my five starting cards. And there's my deck. So I've got three weapons. I've got the Worm Smite, which I'm probably not going to use. Uh, and here's what I did. And this is a rules question. But I decided not to put the Elixir of Healing into my deck. Can I voluntarily just take out any level zero items from the vault that I want to make my deck up to the right size? I think I can. So that's what I did. Uh, I had a level one item. I had a level two item. It was the drum that I got last time, but I didn't want that. So I, I basically got rid of it. Uh, and then because I was an item short, I got an item ze a level zero item out of, the, out of the vault. I think you're allowed to do that. You're just not allowed to take anything above level zero. Anything above level zero I think you have to find during an adventure. Right, okay. Are we ready? Finally. Hour one. Incitation. When this is the hour, no effect. Oh, we need to decide where we're starting. Where's my little figure? There she is. And I need to read the locations. Let's have a look at the three locations. So, the Ruin. When a monster is undefeated, shuffle a new monster into the location. We need to summon and defeat the danger to close the Ruin. Now, that is going to be a combat check of 20. Wow. Yeah, because Hash is now 3. So that's a combat check of 20. The Library. Uh, on your check against a spell or a book, boon, add a d6. Intelligence or knowledge to close it. Okay. Tyler's saying, as long as you are short, you can grab two cards. Oh, two levels lower than your current tier. Oh, I didn't realise that. Anyway, I'll do that next time. But my question is, was I voluntarily allowed to throw away the cards which I didn't want in order that I then had fewer cards than what's available? Because there's no point in me keeping a level 2 drum. It was, it was no good whatsoever. Right, so you can get two levels lower. I could have pulled out level 1 cards. Ah, never mind. We'll do that next time. Um, so does that mean I could have actually thrown away the Star Knife? You can either banish a card while playing and replace it with a card to level minus 2. Or when doing upgrades, you could upgrade the card you are removing with a card of the same type. Or even... So this Star Knife here, should I have between sessions ditched this and swapped it for a level one card. I'm not going to do it right now, but is, is that what we're saying? That basically I could upgrade my entire deck. Okay, you can't throw them away while rebuilding. You have to find a way to banish the ones. Okay, so I've cheated slightly in that I've added the luck stone into my deck. Never mind. Okay, and the shrine. On your divine checks, add two, succeed at a wisdom mode of Right, so I'm not good at closing that. I'm not good at closing that. Hmm. Not good at closing that. Where do we start? Should I have chosen my location before choosing my starting hands? I'm not sure. I'm going to go with the shrine first. Yeah, let's go with the shrine first. Okay, so we've done the hour and we're now exploring. Let's see what we've found. We found a barrier. No, we haven't. Yes, we have. It's a barrier. It's hungry smoke. So straight away, we found a level three barrier. We can either do combat of 14 or disable fortitude or perception of 9. Now, my disable check is d12 plus 2. Yeah. So, or I could actually do combat. Resistant to melee. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You're supposed to choose the location before you draw your starting hand. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Now, the problem is, 
I mean, yeah, it's Hungry Smoke. It makes sense thematically. It is resistant to melee. My three weapons that I have are all melee. So what that means is if I was to actually use a combat, it's going to be 18. Remember, I can evade it. I can just evade this if I want to and just shuffle it back in. If undefeated, I become drained and discard the top D4 cards of my deck. That's really bad. This is, this is, this is off to a, to a bad start. I think I might be evading this. This is quite tough for me. I mean, if I had my Thieves Tools, because it is a trap, so my Thieves Tools would work. But yeah, D12 plus 2. Mm, yeah, evading. That's what I thought. The Dagger and the Star Knife also show as ranged. They do but they are melee. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, thematically, you wouldn't use it as melee or ranged. But as far as the rules go, even if I throw my snakebite dagger, it's still melee. It's, it's still got the melee trait on it. So I'm evading it. And because I haven't got my upgraded skill yet, or bless, yeah, bless, blessing was one of the options. I do have the trumpet, which actually blesses twice. That would have done it. But I've decided to evade it because I've got plenty of time. Okay. Uh, and there we go. I'm not going to explore again. That is the end of the first turn. Do I want to discard any cards? No, I do not. Turn two. Sands of the hour. Let's explore. Now, the chances are I'm going to draw the gas again, aren't I? No, but I have drawn foes on all sides. It's another barrier. Check to defeat none. Each local character summons and encounters the danger. The difficulty to defeat is increased by 3. So it's 23. <laughs> if any character defeats the danger, this barrier is defeated. If any character defeats the danger. Wow. Okay. So... 23 seems a lot, <laughs> to be fair. I know my character has been improving, but not improving that much. So let, let's just see. If I was to do combat, it is immune to cold, mental, poison, and vulnerable to fire. That's fine. I don't have any of those. So if I was to use the snake bite dagger, I would reveal this to use my stealth check, which is a d12. Now, which d12 are we going to use today? Let's use the blue one. Uh, d12 plus 2, plus a d4, plus 1. Um, and then on a local combat check, freely recharge it to add a d4. But because of my special ability, I can reload it to add a d4. And then we have the star knife on a local combat check, freely recharged to add a d4. But because it's a knife, I can reload it to add a d4. Okay. And then, because of Mauricio's special ability, um, on, a, on, a com on your combat check, I can recharge a card to add a d6. So I'm going to recharge Worm Smite to add a d6. Okay. Remember to threaten the dice first. Yes, I should have done. Uh, Johannes is here as well. Thank you for joining in, Johannes. Right. So this is, this is my dice. So the average result is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18. What do I need? 23. My average roll is 18 and I need a 23. That means the chance of me actually succeeding is quite slim. I really don't want to bury the trumpet at this stage in the game. I might have to just... No. Oh. I mean, I've got the Luckstone in hand, but if I, if I fail this, I bury my discards. I don't have any discards, so we're okay for the moment. Let's just move the planar rift over there. 16 plus static bonus. What, is that my average? Six and a half, three and a half, that's ten, fifteen, seventeen and a half. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought about blessing, but I don't know, it's such a good bless. But I bury it to use it, and I, I need to keep that for when I really need it. So I think, I think I'm just going to roll. This is probably not going to work. 
But the downside of this not working... Oh no, I take combat damage as well, don't I? I almost forgot about that. I almost thought, if I don't defeat it, that's fine, because there's not going to be any bad effect. But actually, if I don't defeat it... I'm going to take damage. No, I can't, I can't risk this. Evade again? Seriously? Yeah. But that's two barriers in there then. Both of which are really dangerous. Hmm. And that isn't a trap. Yeah, that isn't a trap. Yep, yeah, evade. So forget all of that. Let's get that card back, and that card back, and that card back, and move that away. We are evading it. Right. This is, this is a challenge. This is really, really tricky. They are two tough cards. They are two tough cards. We're going to see how we go. If we come across it again, we might have to just use the blessing. I could go to a different location and come back here later when I've got my Thieves tools. I might do that, actually. I might do that. Okay, so we're going to progress the hour. We have the Cricket. When this is the hour, when a character moves on their turn, each other local character may move with them. Right, well, that's irrelevant. So, what are we going to do? Are we going to move to a different location? I think I might. I'm going to move to the library. Okay. Uh, if you evade, you don't reload the weapons. Yeah, so I've, I've put them all back. That's right, isn't it? I've put everything back as it was. Yeah. So yeah, I'm moving to the library and we are going to explore the library. And it is an elixir of energy resistance. Huh. Do we want it? I don't know. But I have this new ability now. On a combat check or on a local check to acquire, I can recharge a card to add a d6 so yeah this is what we want to do uh, we need intelligence or craft of five to try and acquire it i don't have any of them do i nope so i'm rolling a d4 <laughs> but i am going to recharge worm smite in order to give me a d6 uh, and that's it Okay, and I've rolled a total of a three. So even with my luck stone. Yeah. So didn't get that. Banished. Um, oh, hang on. On your check against a spell or a book boon. It is not a book boon. Nope. Right, done. End of turn. <laughs> it's not going well. We get a new card. It is the Priest of Phrasma, which is going to be good for healing when I take loads of damage. The next turn is... The midwife, or when this is the hour, at the start of your turn, summon and encounter a monster. Oh, right. This is the card we don't like. So basically, at the start of my turn, it's just a wandering monster. So we have to go through the monsters. And we get a random one. I've suddenly got very hungry. I'm going to be here for at least another hour and a half, aren't I? Oh dear. Maybe I'll eat the dice. Don't eat dice. Okay, are we ready? Oh, evade. Well, yeah, but there's a. I, I need to look at the 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 encounter because the the when you encounter abilities go before, don't they? Does it have any when you encounter abilities? No, so I evade it. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I had forgotten about evade. Evade the summoned monster. There you go. So I evaded it. Nice and easy. Thank you for that. I keep forgetting you can evade any card anywhere. Right. We are exploring the library a second time, and this time we've found a cape of escape. So I need dexterity or stealth of eight. Nice. We have that. We have stealth. Uh, D12. Plus two. And I am going to recharge the Priest of Phrasma. But I don't need it just yet. For another d6. The, the idea of this is that I'm cycling through my deck to get the cards that I want to get. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got it. 
So the Cape of Escape is mine. Discard to move or to evade your encounter and then move. You, su you succeed at any check required to move. So I don't think I need that. I don't think that's any use for me at all, is it? Um, and yeah, I don't like diluting my deck, but... Yeah, because that isn't a card that I want. Maybe I shouldn't have tried to acquire it, because actually that card is of no use to me at all. Oh well, I've done it now, but you can deliberately fail a check, can't you, to say, oh no, let, let, let's do it. If, if we decide we don't want this card, because it is of no use to me whatsoever, and it is diluting my deck. It is an extra life point, but I think I'll be okay. So yeah, I'm going to choose not to pick it up and just to banish it. Okay, thank you very much, Edward. End of turn. So that's two items we've found from here. Yeah, it is another hit point, but I think I'm all right for hit points, he says. There are only two items in the library, so we've got the two items from the library. And we've got the Void Glass Armour. Right, so next turn, we advance the hour. It is the Lady of Mysteries. Isn't there something supposed to happen when the hour is three? Special rule time, special rules. At the end of your turn, if the hour's level is three, you may encounter the planar rift. Okay, so at the end of the turn, we may encounter the planar rift. Right. So, I am going to display my void glass armor. Look at this. And we're then going to explore the library. Harrowing. It is a spell. Now, the good thing is, it is an arcane spell, and that's going to help us. Yeah. On your check against a spell, add a d6. Okay, so we might be able to get this, and then we might be able to use it to help defeat the planar rift. When you, when you defeat the planar rift, remove a marker from it, plus an additional marker if a local character banishes an arcane or divine card. So this is it. If I get this card, and then at the end of my turn, I encounter the planar rift, defeat the planar rift, Banish the Harrowing, I remove two counters off it. That would be awesome. But can I do that? Because this is another interesting scenario. I'm not chasing a villain down. I'm not trying to close all locations. I'm literally trying to remove these three counters from this card. That is my entire objective. If I do that, I win. So, let's look at the chance of me getting the Harrowing. It's not going to be good. Intelligence or Arcane... I do not have. Wisdom, I have d6 plus 1. So it's d6 plus 1. But on your check against a spell, add a d6. And because it's a local check to acquire, I can recharge a card, add another d6, and I'm going to recharge... I'm going to recharge the Star Knife to add another d6. So that's 3d6 plus 1. The average of 3d6 plus 1 is 11 and a half. So we might do it. And I've got the Luck Stone. So... Yeah, I think this is right. Special rule about being prompted... Oh, Paul remembered a special rule without being prompted by the chat. Yes, I did. Hours level is 3. Okay. Oh, if you reveal an Aurora card. Right, okay. Yeah, so I can evade... Oh, I can evade the mummy anyway. Here we go. We're trying to acquire the harrowing spell. Oh, it's not quite enough, is it? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. With the luck stone would be eleven. I'm one short. Rats. So that's gone. Oh, right. <sighs> yeah, so at the end of my turn, I can choose, if I want to, to encounter the Planar Rift. So the Planar Rift is a combat check of 17. 
Oh, bury the Luxstone to re-roll. I could, but if I fail, then I've lost the Luxstone. And this isn't absolutely make or break, I don't think. Oh, you're saying it's worth it. Is it worth it? Oh, I don't know. I quite like the Luxstone for just a sneaky plus one. No, I'm not going to do it because knowing my luck, I will fail it. If the odds were like 80% and I failed, I, I would do it. Because the odds are only about 60%, I'm not going to do it. So we're going to encounter the Planar Rift. Is it you may? You may encounter the Planar Rift. If I do... Ah, before acting, a local character summons and encounters the danger. So we summon and encounter the mummy, which I then evade. Is it, is it literally that easy? Because the Planar Rift can't be evaded but it doesn't say that this can't be evaded. Yeah. I, I think I can evade the mummy, which is the before acting. The difficulty defeat is increased by the number of locations. Oh, right. Okay, so actually it's a combat check of 11, 14, 17, 20. Twenty. Edward is saying, product, re-roll the one. Product? Product, re-roll the one? I don't know what you mean by that. So, oh, if you own a Paizo product, then once per scenario, you can re-roll a die. Where's that rule from? I mean, that's a great rule. I love that rule, and I do own a Paizo product. It's right here. Um, <laughs> that, is a, that is a great role. Great rule. I like that. Oh, so that's an actual Pathfinder Society play. Is it? Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Bit weird, but I can see why. Once per scenario, you can re-roll a one. I actually quite like that as a rule. Um, I, I might implement that, that rule at some point. Um, so yeah, do, do we want to try and fight the Planar Rift when we need a 20? 20. Yeah, we do. And this is what we're going to use the trumpet for. Okay, so we are going to encounter the planar rift at the end of my turn. The mummy arrives. I hide from it. Done. We've then got to do a combat check of 20. Or I could do an arcane or divine check of 12. Oh, this is why you want to close locations first. Yeah, okay. I see. Anyway. Combat check of 20. Off we go. Snake bite dagger. Stab the planar rift. D12. Plus 2. Plus a D4 plus 1. It's not an animal. It's not a human. Nope. And on a local combat check, freely recharge it. But for me, that reload it. Add a D4. And then... I am going to recharge the luck stone... No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I'm going to bury the trumpet, which gives me an extra 2d12. The trumpet is buried. Okay. So that, 3d12 plus 2d4 plus 3. That's totally got to be enough, hasn't it? Yeah. That's got to be enough. Average of... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, average of 26. And I need 20, I need 20. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use my ability to recharge the Luxstone. Because I think, yeah, I'm not trusting the D12s. But three of them together, group think, hopefully each one of them is scared against the other ones, that if it rolls lower, it's going to get destroyed. Um, average of 25.5. Oh, look at that. Yes. So 24, 25, 28, 31. One counter has gone. I cannot uh, banish an arcane or divine card. So it's just one counter. That is the end of my turn. I'm quite happy about that. Considering everything went wrong here, when it actually mattered, I've got rid of one counter. But, 
that is the uh, that is the bless gone. That is my good bless gone. So, end of the turn. I like your your house rule, James. Plus one re-roll for every patron supporter in the chat. Right. Okay. Here we go. Next turn. Did I do something with that? Did I do on your check against an undead card? I don't think I did. No, I completely forgot about that. Never mind. Right, the hour is Shailin's Song. When this is the hour, uh, when you would discard a boon to bless a dexterity or charisma check, you may recharge it instead. Which is awesome, but I don't have any... I don't have any blessings. Right, okay. Are we going to stay at the library? What did we just find? We found a spell. There's another spell there. Is the hour three? The hour is not three. Uh, I think I'm going to stay at the library. Let's see what we can find. It is another spell. Right, and this is a much easier spell to try and get. Intelligence, wisdom, arcane, or divine. Right, well I have wisdom of d6 plus one. So d6 plus one. Uh, on your check against a spell, I get another d6, and I only need a 4. So I don't need to do any shenanigans. But actually, I'm going to. I am going to recharge the Barnberry. My trusty Barnberry. Every, between scenarios, I've got a plant that I know in the local forest, and every t I go there and I, uh, I pick some Barnberries. I'm not going to tell anybody where it is, because they'll all be gone. But yeah, I think I'm going to recharge that to add another d6. That should do it. Done it. Right, so that's my spell. So I'm going to keep that so that the next time we encounter the planar rift, I can banish that and remove two counters and win the game. Is that right? Is that right? I think that's right. So... All I need to do now is find one henchman or wait till the hour is three and then do a super big combat check again. Yes, it's my keen rapier. Right? It's not the old one, it's the new one. <laughs> it's the one I specifically put in, which was a cheat on scenario one. Uh, but, you know, the GM was in a kind mood that day. I think we're done. End of turn. Next turn. Do I want to discard any cards? No, I do not. All right. Oh, we have the World Breaker. We have, a we have a three. So this could be it. This could be a very quick scenario. We'll find out. When this is the hour, you may banish a random blessing from your discards to explore. Right. Not going to do that. We are going to explore the library. In fact, do I need to explore the library? Okay, so here's the thing. You don't need to explore. Exploration is optional. If I do not explore, then at the end of my turn, I can still encounter the planar rift because the hour is three. And I can just fight it and then remove two counters. Drawing a card from the library is potentially dangerous. So I'm not going to explore. This may be the most unusual session I've had of this game, although last... Yeah, if you haven't seen part six of this playthrough series, this is part seven. If you haven't seen part six from last Monday, go and watch it because it was extraordinary. Um, this is what we're going to do. So <clears throat> at the end of the turn, I am going to choose to encounter the planar rift. Before acting, I summon an, I summon an encounter the mummy, which I then hide from. And then... I do want an upgrade. Right, okay. Um, I do want an upgrade. You mean there are better cards in here? No, I, I, I think I want to try and defeat this. Yeah, we'll try. But you're right, I'm not really upgrading my deck. This is the thing. The more you go through these locations, the better cards you will find, your deck will upgrade. And the problem is, if I end this scenario now, Edward's absolutely right, my deck is not going to get any better. 
Yeah, if you don't see a level three boon, then I spent 20 minutes putting it all together for, for no reason at all. Oh, except, no, I did find the level three uh, barriers and monsters. Okay, we're going to do it. So, um, it's 20. Yep. It's 11 plus three plus three plus three. So it's 20. So we need a difficulty 20 check. Okay, so I am going to reveal the Keen Rapier to use my um, acrobatics plus a d6 plus one. So it's plus two because of my acrobatics. If proficient, which I am, you may additionally reload to add another d4, <clears throat> which I will. I'll reload it to add another d4. Then I'm going to use the snake bite dagger. I'm going to reload that to add another d4 and that's freely reload which i'm i'm allowed to do it i'm then going to use my naval hero um on a local combat check recharge to add a d6 okay so that's an ally used you can only use one of each type of card in this new edition of the game which is much better rule okay and then i'm going to use my ability oh no let's work out what the odds of this are uh 7 13 14 15 16 17 18 21. The average of this is 21. So I'm thinking of keeping the look stone. And then either using it to give me a plus one or burying to re-roll. Oh, you did see a level three boon, did you? Okay. And what did I do with it? Oh, the harrowing. Yes. <laughs> I got rid of it. So yeah, I'm not going to use my ability to get rid of a card. I think I need hand size six. The, the next hero point I get... I think I'm going to go hand size six because the problem is with me reloading and recharging cards all the time and needing to keep a couple of cards in hand. I don't have enough cards in hand. Right. Okay. Here we go. We're going to roll. I think I've added this up right. I mean, if we fail, we'll add it up again. That's the, that's the way it works. It's all on the D12. It's all on the D12. And the D12 is 12. So I'm pretty sure that's done it. 21, 22, 27, 30. Yeah. So we've done it. And is this it? Is this the scenario over? When you defeat the planar rift, remove a marker from it, plus an additional marker if a local character banishes an arcane or divine card. I banish that card, remove two counters, scenario over. So it took almost less time to play than it did to set up. It's been the shortest stream, and we started 30 minutes late. Can Edward, Tyler, and anybody else confirm that I've played it correctly? And if I have played it correctly, how did this game compare to your game? If you've played this particular scenario, either let me know live if you're in the chat now, or if you're watching this video afterwards, um, let me know uh, if, if how this scenario went down for you. Play another scenario. Um, I'd love to, but um, we've got something on. So um, yeah, I, if I play another scenario, it's going to be another two hours and I don't have another two hours. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I think we're done. No, nobody has, uh, has confirmed that I've been playing it wrong. So yeah, evading the mummy is massively powerful. And Ben asked earlier on, Ben asked, or I think it was Ben, or was it somebody else asked, how different do the characters play? Uh, and they play very differently because I'm playing Mauricial and I'm able to evade anything. That means every time the mummy arrived, I just, I just avoided it. Um, because if I'd have had to fight it, I would have had to use cards to fight it, which meant I wouldn't have had enough cards for that. So, yeah, it was all correct. Interesting. Very, very weird and interesting scenario. But because I'm playing solo, there was only three, king, three counters on hit. Now, I think the optimum for, the, for this game is three or four people. If we were playing with three players, there would be five locations, which means there'd be five counters on it. Okay. So because I'm only playing solo, I only had three counters to remove. And I was quite lucky in that I drew two level three blessings. Okay, if we look through the 30 card blessing deck. Oh, there's a couple more in there. Oh, yeah. In fact, I drew a high proportion of level three blessings, but there might not be. There might have only been one level three blessing in here or none. 
which meant I would have had to find the henchman. And yeah, it would have been a lot longer. So I think, I think I was quite lucky. I was quite lucky with the withdrawing the level three blessings. I think it was the right idea to stay at the library because the, the spells were at the library and the spells give me the ability to remove a second one. But that was really unusual because I didn't encounter, um, let's just have a look through the locations. So yeah, so the green faith druid was here and the barriers were, were tricky. Yeah, the barriers there were tricky, but that's where the green faith druid was. Was there anything really that I missed? Not really there. What was in the library? The chemist was in the library. Oh, and biting tigers. Ouch. More barriers and a trapped chest. Yeah, so nothing there that I miss. Yes, it's my bad shuffling was the reason I won this time. Uh, and in the ruin, spells a flaming shortbow. Well, I'm not a ranged weapon. That's, you know, Wayfinder might have been useful. Uh, no, so I, I don't think I actually missed anything out. I think that's it. Right, we are, we are done. I, I am still enjoying this game, but I can't quite believe how that scenario played out. And as I say, please, uh, if you've played this scenario, please leave me, me a message in the comments of the video because I am very keen to know how it went for you and if this was just a really, really unusual way that it, it could have all happened. I will be back next Monday. So these are normally on Mondays, but yesterday was a bank holiday in the UK and I did a live Q&A instead. Um, so yeah, I'll be back next Monday, four o'clock uh, UK time, which is three o'clock GMT. And as I mentioned at the start, uh, these videos are not sponsored in any way. They are only made possible uh, thanks to the support of my patron campaign. So a lot of my patron supporters are in the chat now. Thank you very much. It's your support that is making these possible and playing these games is making me happy. Therefore, you are making me happy. We're all good. Um, I am going to be playing some Jaws of the Lion tonight, not streamed. Um, and then I'm going to be uh, getting some more blue sleeves. I'm going to be de-sleeving Marvel Champions and I'm going to be getting some more blue sleeves for this. And I think I'm just going to sleeve all of these cards so that it's all done and dusted and then they're just going to stay, stay in their sleeves. Uh, the reason why I'm using opaque sleeves is unfortunately uh, Paizo... Uh, well, it's not. Is it Paizo's fault or is it the printer's fault? But the card backs between the base game and the expansion are very different. In fact, all of the card colours from the expansion uh, are a lot lighter and all of the ones from the base game are darker. So I'm using opaque sleeves uh, for these because otherwise you'd be able to tell whether it's an expansion card or not. Uh, it's the printer's fault, yes. But working in the industry like I do, if the printer messes up, the printer has to fix it. It's the printer's responsibility. If they mess up, the printer should fix it at their cost. I don't know how it works in America. It might be slightly different. And I know they printed thousands and thousands and thousands of cards, but ultimately, yeah, these things shouldn't happen. But anyway, uh, we're all good. Thanks very much for watching. I will be back tomorrow. As I say, I'll be back next Monday with the next one of these. But if you want to see what I've got planned for this week ahead, I will just put an image on screen right now, if I can find it. I had it here yesterday. Where's it gone? Uh, image, image, is it this one? This is the one. This is what I've got planned for this week. So live Q&A was yesterday. If you want to see uh, a video of me answering questions for two hours, that's on the channel now. That was yesterday. Today was Pathfinder card game. Tomorrow, two o'clock, Cloudspire. That's going to be a long playthrough, longer than today. Uh, but that's happening tomorrow. Thursday, I'm going to be playing some Gloomhaven Digital in the afternoon. Uh, Friday, I'm going to be playing The Magnificent in the evening. And then Saturday, a friend is coming around and we're playing War of the Ring all day. And as mentioned, uh, as you can see at the top, none of these are sponsored. All of this is purely made possible through the support of the Patreon campaign. Uh, so the better the Patreon campaign does, the more of these playthroughs that I do. Um, and the less rulebook work I do, which is great. So we are all done. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to head downstairs and get some food. Take care. I'll see you, speak to you soon. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.